Hi, my name is Paul Grogan and in this gaming rules video I'm going to be telling you how I managed to find a storage solution for all my miniature figures. Now, I don't do that much miniature gaming, but I did start repainting my miniatures. I first started painting miniatures back in the early 80s, but a couple of years ago I decided to restart painting miniatures, mainly as a way to get myself to stop working, sit downstairs, watch some good TV shows and paint miniatures while I'm doing it. I just left these guys over here, let's put them where they should be. There we go, can't have them out of place. Now then, this is Battle Law 2nd Edition, the base set. Um, and this was the big project that I set myself a couple of years ago, I think it is now, about a couple of years ago, that I wanted to start painting all of the miniatures. And over a period of about 18 months, I finally did them. Now I paint miniatures really, really slowly compared to a lot of people, but I finally got them all finished. And then came the question of, how am I going to store these things? Now, initially, I just had all of these in a box. Um, and of course, I, you know, I didn't want, I, I couldn't transport it anywhere and the box had to stay always, you know, the same way up and I couldn't do anything with it. So over, over a period of a couple of months, maybe even two or three months, I basically started asking lots of people for advice on how to store my figures. And thanks to everybody who contributed to those threads. And every time I got lots of responses of ideas of how to store them, I went away and I thought about it for a bit and then didn't do anything about it. And then a month later came back and thought about it, what I was going to do again. So I got three basic solutions of how to store the figures. The first one was to throw them all in a bag. Now I wasn't very keen on this solution, but these are plastic miniatures. And when they're, when they're varnished, you could probably just throw these in a bag, throw them in the box and they'd probably be okay. But in, I didn't want to spend 18 months of my life painting all these miniatures just to throw them in a bag and possibly get them damaged and marked. And yes, I could touch them up afterwards if I wanted to, but I like taking care of the things that I've done, especially things that I've put a lot of time and effort into. So that solution went out the window. Now, another solution that was presented to me was magnetic bases. And I spent ages looking into this. And at one point I was almost about to do it and I was about to order these things online. And then I decided to sleep on it and, and I've decided not to do that in the end. But the idea of the magnetic, magnetic bases is that you take the figure and you either apply a magnetic strip to the bottom of the base. So you get this, this thin magnetic strip stuff and you cut a, cut a strip out, stick it to the bottom of the base. And then what you do is you have metal plates or even a metal storage tray and you, you put them on. Uh, and that way, basically, click, they, they, they stay in place and theoretically you should be able to transport it anywhere. You should be able to store it vertically, shake it, and you should be okay. Now, there's another way of doing it, and that is by getting really, really small sort of circular uh, magnetic things, which I would have had to drill a hole in the bottom and then plant inside, because these bases are already pretty big, and I'm not a big fan of thick, chunky bases. So I didn't really want to expand the base anymore with, with a magnetic strip and also drilling a hole in it, the, you know, there was potential for that to go disastrously wrong. Um, but I, as I say, I was so close to buying these, these, you can get really, really strong magnets that come in really, really small circles. But the other thing is, I wasn't 100% sure that storing it vertically and shaking it and banging it around in the car, they weren't going to slip slightly. So without buying all of the stuff and doing that, I wasn't going to be sure. So the third option, which was probably going to be the most time consuming option for me, was a foam storage solution. Now at this point, I got lots of people sending me messages on various foam storage solutions that you can buy. And you can buy some very, very expensive figure storage cases, which look really, really nice. And they've basically got all of the foam compartments already cut out, already ready for you. Now, I didn't mind spending a bit of money on it, although this is a game I'm probably going to play once a year. Um, it, it didn't seem worth it, but I also, I'm a bit of a craft, crafty type person. I like making things myself. So this was something that I did want to actually try and do myself if I could. But the other reason I didn't go with one of those from Story Solutions is that they come with pre-cut um, spaces. And some of the figures I've got, they're, they're vastly different shapes and they're vastly different sizes. And there would be a lot of wasted space by me putting smaller figures in, in big holes. And plus they'd bounce around a lot. Now that's not a problem because it's a foam solution. But I wanted to, this to take up the, the least amount of space as possible. So I decided that I was going to go with a foam storage solution, which I'm going to show you in a minute. But what I've done is I've actually pre-cut, uh, not pre-cut, I've actually used a razor blade to cut out 
the shapes myself for each of the individual figures. Now, as I say, that was fairly time consuming, but I'm fairly happy with the result. So let's have a look at it. So this is the box that I've currently got all my uh, figures in. And the first thing I'm gonna to mention to you is that it's important for me to be able to actually transport this thing. So here's, here's the box that I've got everything in. Yep, giving it a good shake. And it's important for me, as I say, that, that nothing moves around. So first thing you see is I've made these little ribbons at the side. Now, this is an old shirt that I had that's cut up. I've actually bought a better ribbon. I just haven't had round to, haven't got round to, to putting it on yet. But the idea is, because this box is quite deep, so this is two layers. And the idea is that this ribbon will allow you to pull out the top layer. Now, unfortunately, I made it a little bit too big, so it's a bit tight. Um, but you get the idea. There's basically, there's two layers inside here. Um, so let's show you the first layer. So there we go, that's some of them. And this is in there to protect the bottom layer. Okay, so you will see that this is all yellow foam. In fact, this, this foam here is actually the same as, as this foam, which I, I had lying around and I decided that I was gonna use this first. Um, and it took absolutely ages because this foam is actually a bit springy. So using a razor blade to cut this out actually took quite a long time and was quite difficult to do. Uh, and then I found I had lots of this white packing foam, which is a completely different kind of foam, completely different kind of material. And a razor blade through this just cut straight and was a lot, lot quicker. So I'm not gonna use this foam ever again. I've got loads of this white foam now, um, which is more, well, it is packing foam, but I don't know if you can see, I don't know, I don't know the technical term for it, but it's, um, it's rather than a soft squidgy foam like this one, it's uh, it's not so much. So anyway, a lot easier to use to use this stuff. And as you can see, what I've done is I basically purposefully uh, you know cut cut gaps specifically for the size and shape that it is. Now underneath there is a little bit of kitchen roll because again I want to I don't want my figure you know lying on a on a flat hard surface where it could get you know the paint could come off. So. Yeah, basically it took a long time because what I did is I drew round one of them and then got a piece of paper to that template and then cut out each of these holes. But the idea is that it's fairly obvious which figure goes where because of the size of the holes and the holes are purposefully cut, which means, you know, things don't move around. Now, this is one of the advantages with this system over the ones that you can buy, which come with the pre-cut holes is because you won't, you, you nev you're never gonna get one. If you look at this, this stone golem here, you're never gonna get a shape like that without cutting it yourself. Um, because I have a shape like that, it means I can actually get more in to a, to a smaller space, but also the figure's not gonna move around at all when it, when it wobbles around. Um, so that's those. Now, if we have a look at this, this took, I, I, I've lost track of how long this took. This took me almost a week, I think, just many hours sat in front of the TV, cutting and cutting and cutting. And as I say, that problem with that is because of the yellow spongy foam. And as I cut more and more holes in it, the integrity of the foam got, got worse and worse. So it, it actually made it even harder to cut the more and more holes I got. So I, I won't be using this foam again, as I mentioned. Now, the thing that you may notice if you know the game is that it's currently missing the two big figures. Um, I don't yet know what I'm gonna do with these because they don't, they're not gonna fit in here. So I'm going to try and get some other storage solution for these. And obviously the, the giant eagle thing, that's going to have to come off its base. But I'm going to use a, a similar method to this to, to store these. So yeah, this is going to allow me to basically not only keep these figures in this box so it's safe and they won't get dusty, but also if I needed to, I could transport this um, somewhere else so that you can, um, uh, so that I can, I can play it wherever. Okay, so that's my storage solution for Battle or Two, apart from the big miniatures, which I, uh, as I say, I need, I need to find a place for them. Um, so I hope you found this video useful. If you've got any questions about anything that I've done, because uh, I probably haven't covered things in detail here, then I'm more than happy to, uh, to, to explain anything. Um, I can even shoot another smaller video, uh, if you need me to, of, of me actually, you know, cutting through a bit of foam with, um, with a razor blade. But you know, it's fairly easy. You get one of the figures, you put it on the foam, you draw around it with a pen. Uh, well, what I did, as I mentioned in the, in the previous clip, is I actually drew around a piece of paper, 
cut out that piece of paper and use that as a template for then cutting the holes in the foam. Um, but yeah, a few people that I know um, have asked, you know, because when I, when I started doing this, I asked, um, so Sarastro, who does amazing um, videos on, on how to paint miniatures, I'll put a link in the show notes, I asked him, I said, look, I, what, what do you do? How do you store your miniatures? And he said, well, I, I don't really have a miniature storage solution. So I said, well, I'll come up with one and then I'll let you know. So this video uh, is, is, is for Mark as well. I, I hope you found this video useful, but uh, also other figure painters, Jason Froud is a, another friend of mine. He does amazing quality work. He painted my Gloomhaven miniatures. And in fact, shout out to Jason, but the bases of these miniatures, I was really, really happy with. I was really happy with with how the bases came out. I'm just gonna show you some stills now of, of a close up of some of the bases. Now, I did these bases myself, but when Jason did the bases for my Gloomhaven miniatures, I was like, wow, these are so much better. So I asked Jason how he did the bases, and he actually shot a video, which I will put a link to in the show notes below, on how to do bases of miniatures. And I'm pleased to say that I actually followed the, the procedure that he used for doing the bases, even though I did it myself before he showed me what to do. It's just obviously he's a, he's a much better painter and a much better person at it that his came out looking a lot nicer than mine. So yeah, so that's, that's it. That's, that's what this video is. I've been meaning to do this for ages. I hope some people find it useful. Um, and as I say, if you've got any questions, please let me know in the show notes. Thanks as always for watching and contributing. If you want to engage with me, my BGG Guild is 2258. I'll put a link to that in the show notes as well. And thanks very much to Jason Shaw at audionautics.com for the music used and the gaming rules theme tune. Take care and thanks for watching.